Hello everybody, uh, here, here's me again. And now we are trying to look at our SMZU for feather from Lviv. It is uh, maintained already and we can try to look through to check its resolution on our familiar things like iPhones uh, board, uh, Intel uh, i386 processor and Apple's A Here's A11, but we also have a A13 processor. So let's look at the setup at, uh, at, at all initially. We have got a stand uh, that is not the stand that goes to Feder. He got dual arm stand, but it's very uh, useful and con uh, convenient thing for, for us here if we have no need to make notebook uh, boards, only mobile boards. So this is very pretty stand here too. Let's check how it works. This stand has a, a coarse, uh, a pretty high course of moving up and down. We have a base uh, ring here that lets stand to microscope to set on one of position and make rotations. And uh, uh, focuser uh, alone from this for, for Nikon SMZU has a five centimeters travel here from upper to lower position. It has fine, uh, fine uh, tuning uh, dial as well as normal dial. And in our case, we can put pretty high stuff here when we put our. Uh, focuser block on the upper position. When we put it on our working position to have nine centimeters working distance, we still uh, have pretty nice and big uh, space here. Uh, it's kind of uh, 13 centimeters from the uh, limiter, from the pole, and our normal working height is eight centimeters here. Yes. You can see we have eight uh, and uh, at Saint uh, Frankly he has 82 millimeters working working height <coughs> with uh, plan one uh, x objective. <coughs> so uh, if we look at uh, height uh, from the working place to eyepieces, it's kind of 33 centimeters. And this uh, head has very interesting possibility to turn uh, eyepiece tubes to upper position. I don't see uh, a real need for exactly mobile application, but might be in some cases, uh, it would be interesting to make such uh, high uh, lifted eyepieces. Uh, in this high position, it's uh, 41 centimeter from the working plate, working space. But in our exact case, I'm still using my lower position. And now let's see uh, which possibility we have to uh, for, for this set. Um, first thing that is about to be added, but still not uh, maintenance, it, it's a photo splitter here, Nikon photo splitter. It works very well way. Uh, when we put it in off position, we just have empty slots, so light is no uh, is passing through with no uh, disturbance. When we set it into photo position, uh, twenty percent uh, still goes to both eye channels, and uh, eighty percent of intensity goes to the photo splitter uh, port. <coughs> so I'm I'm showing you how changes working height when we add this photo splitter. <clears throat> By the way, we can see here's a zoom module of Nikon SMZU. Here's a head binocular. And when we attach our photo splitter, overall height increases by four centimeters, I suppose. Let's check now. I, I, I guess the gear will, will be very interested to know this exact height. His is uh, 37 centimeters. It was 33, so it means four centimeters added by photo splitter. 
And I, as I have already said, if you turn photosplitter in off mode, uh, no ob obstruction on, op on optical passes for both eyepieces. When we turn it in photo mode, we just have, we still have a stereo picture on both eyepieces and uh, one is one port, per port is getting picture on it. Uh, for exact this configuration, we will use camera uh, and project an eyepiece, but uh, most of my customers got uh, eyepiece here for attaching of, mo of a mobile phone. But in the, exactly this case, here will be, uh, here will be uh, photo camera not mobile phone. Okay, now let's try to look a bit through the microscope to see its exact possibilities and resolution on our similar objects, familiar for us objects. So first of all, <clears throat> we are trying to look at our some iPhones board. Don't know what the board is at, but we'll try to look at it. So I just need to make some adjustment adjustments here and we are trying to we, we are going to look through the eyepiece i need to make some adjust oh, okay i see i see maybe that is probably okay so <clears throat> now guys we are putting our phone to one of eyepieces and we are trying to look through it what have we got so let's wait a moment. We need to attach our eyepiece here. I'm trying to find proper position here. Oh, kind of that. Good, we've, we've had it. So here's a minimal, uh, minimum uh, magnification. It, it, it's go, it goes to be as seven and five times and let's look let's move a bit over the board here mm, here's autofocus and might be I need to make it a bit okay oh, here so let's move our plate we have connectors here let's look at them you have fine focus here. Okay, so we have our connectors, but it's not that inter that much interesting. We have uh, pins here. I but I still don't see what is interesting here. Okay. And maybe some uh, condensers and uh, resistors here. So we still can't see real resolution by those samples because every microscope can show them pretty easy. But we still need to move it a bit. <clears throat> uh, but to see real resolution we need to get a little magnification from the phone only then we can reach to the edge of diffraction resolution of microscope itself we can even move a bit farther in resolution here and let's walk over the plate or the board okay what have we got in here let's check what have we gotten okay i suppose it's very familiar for both most of you very familiar part of board. Okay, let's move over it a bit. And let's make 
make a little magnification. You can easily see chromatic aberration. It's not that much in our case, but you can see some parts of resolution as well. Okay, so I guess you won't see anything interesting here. So let's stick to our Intel processor. Let's do that. Okay, wait a moment. So we have got our Intel processor. We have only one place to see here. It's our resolution chart. And with this chart, we can easily spot a place that has to be easily resolved, but not that easy, saying frankly, I need to make a fine tuning. <clears throat> so here's our structure with very fine details. I'm trying to see the structure, but I couldn't do that. Uh, you can easily see that uh, items that make the structure, the composed structure, are pretty big. You can easily see size. Okay, but I can make you proper sample how it works. Maybe it will be better. Okay, so we still can't find anything noticeable here. So let's go to our last scene to uh, iPhones i11 processor. Not even i11. Let's turn to i13, a13 proper processor of iPhone. Let's look on its structures again. a bit moved out of here. Wait a moment, I'm, I've lost position for a while. Let me find it back. It's decided to move away, not that easy to work with phones. <clears throat> so, we are getting our what is it? I can't find it. Come on. Oh, here. Here is our A13 uh, A13 iPhone processor. So let's just look for a while on its surface to see a real resolution here. I suppose I need to turn it this way. Mind is that? Okay, let's see what have you got here. So here's our surface, and you can see a real resolution here. It's uh, not that much as seen through the eyepieces, but it's not that far from proper position here. Oh, we got it. So let's just move a bit over the surface and just see this fine structures we got. Let's walk a bit over the processor here. Uh -huh. I see very fine conductors here. And it, when we make a fine focus, we can see at least two layers. But and when we look through, through both eyepieces, we can easily see depths of those 
at least three layers here. So let's move a bit farther. And might be, I would suggest that iPhone removed chromatic aberration. Looks very similar for that because I see, no, I see, I see uh, purple fringes, but on the main board, those fringes are not seen. Okay, so let's move away from the, from the processor and we need to see our last space here. Then frankly, when we look through eyepieces, we need to adjust I pieces properly to get uh, still focus. I didn't do it, so we are losing focus when I'm making uh, zoom. It's not an issue, it is just not set properly. Okay, so we have looked at all those, all those uh, devices here. It was Intel processor, it was Apple's processor, and it was some Apple board. So <clears throat> we can see now uh, real, we, we have seen real resolution of our Nikon SMZU. And you can, by the way, look at our uh, fiber optic source. It's seen that uh, has uh, uh, the fan that turns only when uh, temperature goes to 13, uh, to 70 degrees. So now it's still, it's still quiet because it still hasn't reached that temperature and this uh, block has no flicker uh, flickering when it slides no uh, pulse impulse modulations at all it's very nice for your eyes and as i said already when uh, brightness is not that much uh, fine is not turned so it's totally quite simple okay guys so if you've seen our uh, nikon smzu that goes to feather i hope it will work there well so thank you for watching and uh, leave your comments if you want to know something about this cool microscope bye bye everybody